I live by two little principles, two little principles. I live only for the day. I've learned not to dream about the future. I've learned not to regret about the past. Only live for today. The other one is a little thing that I copied from Leo Rostin, who wrote a thing about what was important in life. And, and he said in that one little thing, live your life so that it made some difference that you lived at all. It doesn't matter how big the difference is. It can be infinitesimally small. Some difference that you were here at all. I, I didn't really start doing much spine work till the early 80s, about 1980. At that time, uh, all adult spine work, probably 30% of your patients had a good result. The rest of them just got through or didn't get through. And I, I really would be embarrassed to say that it was not a very good field at the time. And there was no interest in it because the results of most operations were not very good. Oh, it's tremendously changed. It's, it's unbelievable changed. When I first started doing instrumentation, there were no instruments or tools to accommodate the patient's anatomy. When Steffi and Sontag began their careers in operative spinal surgery, surgeons had no capacity to manipulate the spine. Once you could make a diagnosis, there wasn't anything to do about it. We were just trying to cobble it together and putting this bone around the margins and hoping that it would all glue it together. The best we could do was to put a bit of wire and loop it around the vertebrae. Very basic. This, this, uh, this is a pedicle screw. And so Steffi invented a device which would allow surgeons to effectively manipulate and stabilise the spine. And so these screws would pass down through this part of the bone called the pedicle. So if you have somebody who has a deformity and you want to correct that deformity, the pedicle screws um, provide an excellent grip that holds the vertebra in that position. I was not the first person to use a pedicle screw, although I thought I was, because nobody, I'd never even heard of it before. Perhaps the first of the pedicle screws was by a gentleman called Raymond Roy Camille. Now, Raymond Roy Camille had his business in Paris, but it was exceedingly small and only been done by him. Roy Camille's efforts, which started in 1963, received little acclaim outside of Paris. But when Steffi started doing his own pedicle screw insertions in 1982, the landscape was different. It was, it was almost a feeding frenzy at the time because the spine surgeons were hungry for something new, something different. There wasn't anything new. And what they were doing wasn't working. Steffi also had great determination. With the knee program in Richards, I would say, well, you need to have a different size. You need to have this done. You need to have that done. And they'd say, well, we'll put that into the committee and we'll see what they say. Once it goes to committee, you can forget it. You're not going to see it again. Or if you do, it's going to be a long time from now. I didn't want the committee. I was the committee. I want it now, tomorrow. And that's how it worked. <laughs> and with this determination and the invention's potential, the pedicle screw became incredibly popular. But after we had done them for quite a while, we realized that we had to have the blessing of the FDA. And they did not approve it. They said, you have to do an IDE, an Investigational Device Exemption. I went to Tom Callahan, who was head of the device department of the FDA, and said, Tom, uh, last I heard, the vertebra was a bone, and this screw is like any other screw in the world. Uh, 
I don't see any license on your wall that tells me that you're a medical doctor. You can tell me where I can and can't put a screw. He says, I can't tell you what to do with it. All I can tell you is you can or cannot sell it. That's all. If you want to give them all away, you can give them all away. Doesn't matter to us, but you cannot sell it as a pedicle screw. I said, well, it's in a bone. He said, if you want to call it a bone screw, you can sell it tomorrow. We'll give you our blessing because it is a bone screw. But if you want to call it a pedicle screw, you must do an IDE. I said, fine, we'll do them both. And it wasn't until a lawsuit in Lake Charles, Louisiana occurred because the doctor there damaged a nerve root with the pedicle screw when he put it in. And the patient sued him. And the, the attorney, in his doing his homework, found out that we were doing both, selling a bone screw and not calling it a pedicle screw because we hadn't done the IDE yet. And he capitalized on that and took us to court with a class action lawsuit to follow. And the class action lawsuit went on for quite some time. It all started and then really caught fire and burned very brightly with the program in 1993, that was. We'll have back pain sometime during our lives. Now, for some of those with serious pain, there is a surgical treatment using back screws. And every year, tens of thousands of people have these screws surgically implanted into their spines. But a 2020 investigation has uncovered some shocking facts about this technique that have never been reported before. You down in Baba Walters uh, had a segment that uh, pedicle screws are uh, an uh, evil thing. We can put these in and they are stronger than a brace. And the man many of these patients blame is Dr. Arthur Steffi, the Cleveland back... The program gave a voice to patients who had been injured as a result of pedicle screw surgery and to the FDA, who claimed that Steffi was doing the wrong thing by labelling his devices as bone screws. We showed current FDA Commissioner Dr. David Kessler Dr. Steffi's video testimony when he was asked if the FDA said he could market his device for use in the spine. There was no... Did they say that, sir? Yes, they did. It's fair to say that they circumvented the law. The story was not without some merits. Patients had been injured as a result of surge and misuse of pedicle screws. While these screws were a, a substantial step forward, they're not immune from causing complications. That's not so much the fault of the screw, but the surgeon who uses it needs to know how to use it. And Tim Johnson never questioned the invention's validity. Like, never be used? No, uh, in the right hands, the hands of a skilled surgeon who has experience in this kind of surgery for the right reasons, such as certain surgery for tumors of the back or for certain kinds of fractures, these plates and screws can be very helpful. The problem but though Johnson was fair, the damage of the program was irrecoverable. Uh, that led to a massive uh, uh, class suit, settle, uh, class suit uh, litigation where uh, the lawyers uh, asked patients if they had pedicle schools in them that they uh, please contact the individual lawyers to, uh, to, to sue the manufacturers. After a while, it became a very big thing. I had over 8,000 lawsuits directed at me as being the inventor of the of the pedicle screw. I know he had tremendous um, drains on, on him emotionally and physically, I'm sure. Soon, other companies that manufactured implants, as well as the surgical societies, were implicated in the lawsuits. It had in, hindered all the education in this country. It threatened to shut down both of the neurosurgical societies and, and the orthopedic academy, academy of orthopedics, threatened to shut them all down. Uh, and uh, multiple lawsuits initially were lost uh, and won by the plaintiff lawyers. But as the lawsuits accumulated, so did positive data, which showed the advantages of the pedicle screw. So any technology can be misused. But as time goes on, the value of that technology, its, uh, its efficacy, its safety, 
is going to become apparent, and that is what happened with pedicle screws. And after uh, realizing that the benefit of the pedicle screw, in 1998, the FDA uh, reclassified the pedicle screws, meaning it is now uh, approved to place and to uh, patients. And uh, it changed the landscape tremendously. But the reclassification came too late for Steffi and his company Acromed. Finally, the judge in Philadelphia who was overseeing the whole class action lawsuit said, you know, you can settle this. You can settle this by paying us off uh, $112 million. Uh, so I said, I've got to get this gone. The only way I could come up with $112 million was to sell Acromed. Steffi sold his company in March of 1998, just three months before the FDA reclassified the pedicle screw. Without his company, he was forced into early retirement. Of course, he got a raw deal. The, uh, the lawsuits and all of that should never have been. The deal he got was terrible. A guy who made so much contribution uh, to then be sort of on the sidelines watching it must be very difficult. Some difference that you were here at all. And that's all I've tried to do. Whether I was successful or not, time will tell. If the purpose in life is to make a difference, then Art Steffi has succeeded beyond his wildest, perhaps, dreams. Uh, he has made such a difference. And the pedicle screw was just the start of Steffi's contributions. He was a genius. There were so many things that he was just so far years ahead of the rest of the world. And could you do what you do today without those things? No. <laughs> And as long as I can keep going, I'll keep going. Here I am building a barn and working, excited to build a new room next year. I may not even be here next year. I may not live long enough to see the barn go up, but if I stop because I may not live long enough, then you may as well forget everything. So I won't stop till the day they plant me. Then they won't plant me because I'll go the other way. <laughs> and it's fun. It's fun to finally be back doing things again. That's, that's what keeps me going.